Welcome back to my channel, teachers at mga kadimpol, para sa panibagong learning encounter with Dimple Dilan. Para po sa mga bago sa aking channel, ako po si Sir Dimple D. I am a high school teacher. I also serve as part of our school's ICT group support, which means I help teachers in their educational technology needs into their classroom. And for today's episode, I will give you a simplified step-by-step -step guide in getting started with Google Classroom. Also, I will share some tips and tricks for using it with your teaching. Kung di pa po tayo familiar sa Google Classroom, ito po ay isang parte ng learning management system na maaaring gamitin ni teacher sa kanyang virtual classes. It is a service that allows you to share files, create assignment, and grade assignments, and communicate with your students in a paperless way. Here's the good news, teachers. Alam ba natin na ang Google Classroom is completely free? Kailangan lang ng school or division natin na mag-sign up for free G Suite for Education para magamit ng ating mga estudyante. And then, the G Suite for Education account will help to ensure additional privacy setting and security setting for our student. So, if your school division is not already signed up, share this information with them. And with any luck, they would be willing to sign up once and see all the remarkable and limitless features of the Google Classroom has to offer. Ilalagay ko po sa description box ang link ng Google Classroom website para pwede niyong buksan at sabayan ako sa step-by-step -step learning tutorial na video na ito. I-open lang po natin ang ating browser at i-type ang classroom.google.com sa search box at i-click ito. Then mag-login po tayo sa ating official G Suite account by typing your email at password, then click Next. Then it will re redirect us to the environment or interface ng ating Google Classroom. First thing you need to do is create your class depending on what subject you teach. You may only need to create one class or you may want to create different classes for each subject for each group of students you teach. To create a class, you are going to click on the plus sign in the upper right corner and then click on create class. If your school does not already have a G Suite for Education account, you will be prompted with a message asking your school or division to sign up before you use the service with our students. You will then enter the class name, section, subject, and room number, but the only part that is required in this field is the class name. Teacher, I always include the grade level and section I teach to properly guide my class since my students do join multiple classes through Google Classroom and I don't want them to get confused on which is which class they are entering. Once you are done providing the information, just click on Create Class and you will be redirected to the class page. Before we navigate this page, let us talk about how to make your students join their class once you have created it. You can individually add students to the class by clicking on the People tab at the top and then clicking the Invite Students using their assigned or provided domain to them. For example, in QC, we have at deathedqc.ph. However, a much easier way to do this is having the students join your class on their own. Under your class name, you will see in the class code, instead of clicking create class, students will click join class and then type in your personal class code. You can display your class code in a larger size by clicking on the display button that is next to the code. And the good news teachers is, once a student join your class, it will always appear in their Google Classroom until you either remove this student from the class or archive the class. Now let us go ahead and jump into the features of this class page. First, you can change the theme, which will change up the colors and the images by clicking on this select the button in the rectangle surrounding your class name. 
I personally like to have a different colors or themes for each one of my classes to help me differentiate between them. Kasi nakakalito eventually kapag marami na tayong ginawa na class and then kung pare-pareho yung color at theme na gagamitin natin for them. And in the stream tab, all the activities that has taken place within your classroom such as announcements or any assignments you had posted as a teacher and students comments or post will be seen here. You can easily post announcement or add attachments to the stream page by clicking in the share with your class. You can either type a message to your students, you can attach files from your computer or Google Drive, you can add YouTube or video ad links, and then post it directly to your stream page. You can also schedule this post to go out a specific date and time, or you can save the post as a draft, then post it later. You can also choose to what class you would like to share these announcements. Or you can select specific students by clicking the drop down arrow next to the all students section. At yung pangalawang tab natin ay tinatawag na classwork. Ito ay matatagpuan sa upper part ng ating main place. Dito pwede tayo mag-create ng assignment para sa ating mga estudyante. To create a new assignment, just click on the create button and then choose the type of assignment you want to create. The regular assignment option is what I normally use because it allows me to create my own title, type in my own instructions, and along with it, attaching any documents from my computer. Here I can assign a point value to the assignment or having the ungraded. I can also assign a due date for the students to complete the assignment I have posted. And I can create a topic for the assignment as I described before. You can choose to post the assignment immediately or schedule the assignment to go out on a specific date and time. Or you can save it as a draft and return it to it later. I do schedule of all Google Classroom assignments at the beginning of the week para hindi masyadong toxic sa part ko na everyday akong kailangan mag-update kay Google Classroom. We can use the following options when creating an assignment. Number one, the quiz assignment option. It will automatically attach in a blank Google Forms that you can use to create a quiz for your students. The question option allows us to pose a question to your students and then have it them respond to it. The material option is a great way to share attachment or materials with your students that you want them to have access to without prompting a specific assignment for them to complete. We can use material option to share digital copies of the notes with our students na pwede lang balikan anytime na gustuhin nila. And we also have reuse post option pag gusto natin gamitin yung mga dati na natin na gamit na materials. And of course, the topic option which is a great way to organize all your assignments into a category under the class work. And teachers, you can also view the Google Calendar for your class which will indicate all the due dates for all the assignments that you have created for them. And also, you can add assignment, materials, and questions to the classwork tab. They will also appear in your stream tab in chronological order with the most recent appearing at the top. So lahat ng ginagawa natin basically, lahat yun ay nagpa-prompt sa ating stream tab. And here are some tips and ideas for different types of assignments that you could have your students completed through Google Classroom. Number one, you can link different articles or website. To have your students do more researches and then have them answer questions either by using the Google option on a Google Classroom or by linking a Google Doc where you already have outlines all the questions you want them to answer. Number two, you could also link quizzes to check for students' understanding through Google Forms. And the best part about Google Forms is you can make them self-creating. Later on sa mga susunod pa natin na video, pag-uusapan natin how to create certain exit assessment para sa ating mga bata. Number three, you can also have students complete 
the graphic organizers digitally through Google Docs workable sheets. Indeed, ideas in creating assignments in Google Classrooms are limitless. So tayo nalang yung magsasawa kung anong pwede natin gamitin. Kaya we should continue exploring different types of assignments. Moving on to the next tab. This is the People tab. It allows you to see all the teachers and the students you have connected to your class. I have already demonstrated to you on how to invite students to the class could either be manually or using the alphanumeric code, but you can actually use that and follow the same procedure to add other teachers to your class, especially when you want them to have an access to your materials. And once you have invited students to your class, you can also invite their parents or guardians para naman makalusib din sila ng updates sa katayuan ng ating mga isujante. In fact, we could send emails to our students. We can mute them. That actually revokes their ability to post and comment on things on Google Classroom. Ninagawa ko to normally kapag alam ko yung bata ay may tendency na mag-post ng mga profane languages or mga vulgar words na alam natin na medyo mag-focus ng uh, hindi magandang learning experience sa lahat ng mga classmates niya sa Google Classroom natin. You can remove students from your class when they are no longer part of it. The Grades tab is essentially an online grade book for all the assignments of our students that you have on Google Classroom. This is actually accessible and allows us to see everything in one place. You also can go in and edit any of the grades from the screen if you need to. The last important feature I want to highlight with Google Classroom is the class setting. You can access the setting by clicking on the gear button in the upper right hand corner of your class page. In case there are changes, you can edit any information for your class in the class details section. The general settings allows you to do a lot of different things. First, you can choose to display, reset, or disable your class code. Second, you can change the settings for your stream page and the abilities of teachers or students to post on it. Third, you can also change the settings for the display of notifications on the stream page. Lastly, you can choose to show deleted items or not in the grade calculation section. You can edit the grading system to either go off of total points or having weighted grading system with categories. There you go, teachers and mga kadimpol. I hope I was able to extend my little technical know-how on how to efficiently maximize the use of our Google Classroom. If you want me to do another tutorial videos simplifying the use of other Google applications, Please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to share this video out with your teacher, friends, or your school, or your division, and to whoever you think needs to see it. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos na I upload ko pa. Thank you, thank you very much teachers and have a happy learning day!